Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. My name is Leslie and today we are going to work on some master boards. I am in the process of starting to work on a Halloween journal that I will be using both my own digitals and Dash of Dave also has a whole bunch of new digitals that will be coming out shortly. Um, so I won't be using any of those papers as of yet because those are currently not out on the market to be purchased yet. Um, I have not printed mine out, but I'm not including any of that stuff in the master boards. Master boards are basically what I'm going to use scraps and stuff on. So I am going to see what I can use from my scraps, book pages, stuff like that. And then what I do is I take 12 by 12 pieces of cardstock that I have from paper pads that I know I'm not going to use. I'm never going to use anything this big. So I took three of them out. I don't know how many we're going to get done, but we're going to start with this one. I don't like snakes, so Neil say I definitely want to cover this one up. But um, I hope everybody's doing well. And what we're going to do is, like I said, I'm going to empty out a bunch of these. And we're going to see what we can use. Because if you put them all out, you kind of see what you have and what you don't have. Some of these are stickers. Some of these are pieces of paper. And I'm not worrying about theme or anything like that right now. Right now, the only thing I'm worrying about is trying to get the master board piece completed. All right. So let's see here. And then we'll do some, we'll put some nice pieces and stuff in, on, on top of it once we get to that point. But let's see what we got here. So I had this paper I know I wanted to use. Now I'm never sure whether or not I want to ink my stuff or not. So I'm gonna take my ink out just to be on the safe side. And the ink that I use is Walnut Stain. I apologize. My lighting is really bad in here. I can't use my bedroom as of right now because I have what looks like a tree growing underneath my floor. I have to contact the apartment complex. It is literally, the floor has come up on almost the whole entire floor in one section. It looks like a whole tree stump or a I don't know if it's a root, I have no idea, but there's no tree outside, but the whole floor has gone up so so much so that the floorboards that they had put in are starting to split. So I have to contact them to see about getting them to come out and fix it, which I'm sure they're gonna have to rip apart and I have so many craft pieces in there. I have so many pieces of furniture in there. I mean, it's in the part where you walk. So, I don't know. I have no idea what's growing underneath it. I am so curious to see what happens because what I'm thinking is they're going to have to cut all that flooring away and then they're going to have to refloor it. So, I don't know. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this as my, my glue paper because needless to say, right now, since I'm working out of two different spaces, I can't find anything. I think I lost my one bone folder, my really good bone folder. I know it's here somewhere. Can I find it? No. So 
so the glue stick I'm going to use today, I have a bunch of these. I need to finish them. They are the Scotch Create glue sticks. This is the permanent. And I know Pam at the Paper Outpost loves these. I have a love-hate relationship with them. <laughs> I mean, they do work well. I, I, I have to say that. But in the summer, I have a hard time with them because I don't know what it is with them. They, they get too gloppy. So how is everybody? I have been doing okay. Like I always say, I have my good days and I have my bad days. So on my good days, I will try and shoot videos whenever I possibly can. And I will try and keep you guys in frame because I know I'm notorious for doing that. And what I'm doing, I'm just, I'm just going to pull out anything here. So the weather has gotten pretty much, we're, we're really dealing with so far beautiful fall weather it was raining earlier today um not much we only had like a little bit so it wasn't too too bad but um as of right now i did open up my windows we have had the air conditioners on because it's been humid and stuff so but um basically as long as it's not real humid, I will open up the windows. Like today, the high I think is supposed to be like 76 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, what that is for anybody over in Europe <laughs> uses the others, I don't know. But um, but it's it's we have a nice breeze, it's nice and cool. And I'd like to say thank you to my new subscribers that I've picked up. Um, thank you very, very much. I know a lot of you had liked my video where I was doing the sewing. So if that is something that you want to see a little bit more of, I will certainly make more videos like that. Please let me know down in the comment section down below if that's something you would like to see more of. Like I said, when I made that video, that was kind of like the only thing I was able to do was to sit and kind of make clusters. So that was why I was doing them at night while I was watching TV. And this Saturday, I will be doing a live here on YouTube. It will be at three o'clock Eastern Standard Time, which is my time. And what I plan on doing is working on the two journals that I have that I'm working on to as giveaways on my 1500 subscriber giveaway once I get to 1500 subscribers which we are in the 1200 range as of right now and again I'd like to say thank you to everybody who has subscribed and I have not done a live in a very very long time I used to do them when I was doing like my um, candle videos and stuff like that. I used to do a bunch of those. Not that I did that many of them. I did a couple of them, probably a handful. So they are on my channel, but they're probably from like five years ago, four, maybe four years ago. So 
so I'm not really sure. But um, I will probably do a test just to make sure that everything is working okay because I will have my iPad in front of me so I can watch the chat. Um, you know, we'll go from there. But um, yeah, I, I, I kind of want to do some lives. Also too, I still don't have 4,000 watch hours. I have been doing YouTube for a very, very long time. I know I'm sporadic, unfortunately, when I do YouTube. Um, but what I want to do is I want to do some lives. I'm hoping that that'll help with my watch hours. So if you guys tend to watch me, let me know. Like I said, I am going to do my first one at 3 o'clock on a Saturday. I figured that might be a really good time for people to watch. And I have my windows open, like I said, so you're gonna hear birds and you're gonna hear nature, so. I don't want that to be that straight. I do you like that. And I know my hands are gonna get sticky. What else we got here? So if you happen to see that I have a video on here and it's from the concert that I went to for Ghost, that was the one I had been talking about for a very long period of time where I had purchased tickets for my husband and I. We we really enjoy Ghost. We really love their music. We think the guy is absolutely phenomenal when it comes to his style of writing. The man is just a genius, he truly is. And um, so we got to do a meet and greet with him. I was okay, I, I had I had to bring my cane, so I had to walk with a cane. So I had purchased a really nice wood oak cane. And I dressed up really nice. I didn't dress up in costume or anything like that, like a lot of people do. Um, so basically, you had to stand around for a rather long period of time. There was no place to sit. So I have to, it really bothers me because of my back. And I had been told that I have stenosis, um, spinal stenosis. Now, I still have not been diagnosed with anything. I went to go see a hematologist. I'm assuming since my, I, I never heard anything from the hematologist after I had done the 24 hour urine test. I'm assuming I don't have cancer, which is a very good thing. But um, my protein levels, I guess they had said were elevated based on what they saw from my blood work. So that was the reason why I had to go and see the hematologist. So I have another appointment in October to go and see the hematologist again. Um, where do I want to put you? We'll put you right here. Um, but next week I go to see pain management, but since I haven't been diagnosed with anything, I have to see somebody within the organization at, or the company with pain management that they're gonna try and see what they're gonna be able to do for me right now but, you know, I'm not working because I can't, I can't currently function because I'm in the banking industry and, you know, I mean, I had been working from home, which I don't think I'll, I'll be doing anymore, but um, 
I don't know. I just when you when you work in a bank, you stand on your feet. You either sit at a desk or you stand at your, on your feet. They now make you do every single job in a bank. So you no longer just sit at a desk and open up accounts, you know, help people. You basically do everything. So you do the teller work, which means you're dealing with money. You deal with this. So you have to stand. I'm not going to be able to stand. So as of right now, you know, things have gotten to the point where, you know, disability only lasts for so long so um, at the end of the disability they want to put me on to long-term disability for right now and you have to go through Social Security they want you to do this they want you to do that which is fine I understand but the problem is you know these insurance companies don't want to pay you so they don't care you know, I mean, they send out paperwork to the doctor's offices and, you know, you have to literally do all the work for them. You know, you have to call these companies and, and these doctor's offices and say, hey, by any chance, did you send out the medical reports that Social Security or the disability people are looking for? Because, you know, I really do need this income, <laughs> you know. And it just gets frustrating. It really does. So, like I said, as of right now, you know, and then our printer died. And then it's funny, John comes in to me this morning and he throws a piece of paper on my computer. He was able to get the, the laser printer to work. Now, I already bought a printer. I went, I decided on an inkjet printer instead of the laser because I, I need to do a lot of printing, you know, with me doing digitals and stuff now and all that, you know, and design team stuff. I use a lot of ink. I spent one whole day, John can certainly attest to this. I probably spent a good eight to 10 hours watching videos on YouTube about printers. So I was dead set. I really wanted to get one of those eco tanks or mega tanks where you do the ink instead of the cartridges. But I was hearing, you know, I read all the, it, the stuff on you know, what people say about, you know, the reviews and all that stuff, you know, because we only had this printer, what, two years, maybe just about two years. And I'm like, what do you mean? It's not working already, you know, and then I always have issues anyway, because of my laptop, I always have problems with printing for my laptop. I have no idea. And I'm sure it's me who's doing something wrong because I am not tech savvy whatsoever. But how I got sidetracked. I was talking about ghosts. How did I get to this point? Anyway. So we ended up buying a new printer yesterday. It is not any of those eco tanks, nothing like that. It does. It is cartridge based. I did get a Canon. It is a crafters printer, meaning it does cardstock. It prints on cardstock. You can print up to 12 by 12 pieces of paper. So I was like, I was really the more reviews I saw on it, the better it looked. And I'm like, oh, but it has cartridges. And I really didn't want the cartridges, but we ended up finally going with that one. So I ordered that last night. It's supposed to come tomorrow. So John will have to set that up. But supposedly as of right now, the 
laser, the Hewlett Packard laser printer works, which I'm kind of glad only because I just bought all the colors of cartridges that you need for the laser printer. And they're like 56 bucks a piece. So I was like, oh, <laughs> I was like, no, why does this always happen to me? But anyway, let's go back to Ghost. So um, I had purchased those tickets. So we were gonna go do the meet and greet with Tobias, who is the, the main guy from Ghost. And so you have to stand around for a long period of time. So due to the fact that, you know, like I said, I have the stenosis, spinal stenosis, I have a hard time standing for any long periods of time. So I find it very hard for me, even with the cane, it doesn't matter. I'm very heavy. So, you know, I'm like 325 pounds. I had lost 32 pounds. I got on the prednisone, the doctor had put me on, and then needless to say, I kind of ended up falling by the wayside like I normally do. Ugh. And it's no fault but my own. And um, this is way too big. The um, So like I said, unfortunately, I did gain some weight back. Not happy about that, but it is what it is for right now. It is very hard when you're staying on a diet like I was doing um, keto, which I truly do need to stick with because my hardest thing to deal with is carbs. Um, my body does not like carbs and or sugar because as soon as I eat them, I can feel a difference. But do I stop eating the other stuff? No, I don't. I did really good. I had done from February February, March, April, May, June-ish. And I started to falter come mid-June. Not saying that I don't falter in between every once in a while, I do. But I had gone pretty much all that time and I was really, really good. And got down 32 pounds. I was four pounds away from being back in the 200s. I, I swear I have self-sabotage. I really do. I don't understand it, but I truly do believe I do have something self-sabotage. I really do. But it's hard and you know what? My problem is I tend to beat myself up and then I end up being worse <laughs> because the more I beat myself up, the more upset I get and the more I eat because I'm an emotional eater. I do need to go back to seeing a mental health care type of person for my eating addiction because I do, I, I have a serious eating condition where I truly don't have much in the way of control. I will go sometimes where I don't eat. You know, I mean, I'll eat, but I won't eat. I'll eat like one meal a day, which then doesn't help my metabolism any. So I'm sure that makes it even worse. But anyway, like I said, I, I had wanted to be thinner for the ghost meet and greet. So 
So that didn't help matters any because I had gained the weight, a good part of the weight back for that. So I was kind of annoyed because here I was going to meet Tobias Forge. And of course, you know, I ended up being heavier than I wanted to be. Plus, not only that, it just caused a lot more issues for me trying to being able to stand and all that fun stuff. But so we had to stand around for like a good two hours. Now these tickets were not cheap at all. So you would really think that, you know, for the amount of money that you're paying, I don't know, you would think that you would have a little bit more, I don't know, like they would do something more for the people that are spending all this money. I mean, I don't know. That's just my opinion, but whatever. Um, so we waited online. And as we're as the night was progressing, it was about they didn't start letting us down into the arena. So where they do the meet and greets is down where they have like like the production offices and stuff like that, and I guess where their dressing rooms are and all that. Because you're all the way down in the basement. And, I mean, it was interesting to see because I've never been down in the basement of a um, of an arena. So that was interesting. But, um, but yeah, it was... So and then you had to wait online for that. So we were, we were waiting and you had to go all up and down these stairs. And the guys were really nice. They're like, if you need to go in the elevator, we have an elevator. And there was another guy, another gentleman who had had surgery just recently. So he had the little rolling walker like I have. But I was like, how am I supposed to bring a rolling walker? Because I'm not going to have any room. We had seats that physical seats there was no way I was going to be able to be standing in the pit for this concert there was no way I had a hard enough time as it was standing and is there any more places I need to put anything right here oh and right there um so I had said to him you know how, how, I, I couldn't, I didn't bring mine. I said, only because I, I'm sitting down and I didn't think I was going to have any room. He says, well, we're, we're going to be, we're down in the pit, he said. So he says, that's why I had called, I had called for, you know, my father. And he, he said, they said that he could definitely, you know, bring it would be no problems. Again, due to the fact that, you know, it was, down in the pit I couldn't do that so I was sweating to death <laughs> I have no idea why I think between my nerves of meeting him and all that stuff I think just added to the whole thing where I was in pain and all that fun stuff but um we, we start to get to the thing, and the guy goes, do you have anything for Papa? Now, his stage name, his character name, he goes by Papa. And um, so, and I'm like, no. And I, I decided to go ahead of my husband, John. We should have probably gone together, but we didn't. So if we ever do it again, we're going to go together. Because he froze just as badly as I did. So here is the first one. So it is just basic. I'm not going to put anything on top of it right now. So we're just going to leave this as is. We are going to take another one, the one that we've been doing all the gluing on. And we're going to do another one. And we're going to roll with the punches here and see what we can come up with for this. So yeah, I uh, went in front of him. So as soon as you walk around the corner, they have curtains 
And as soon as you walk around the cart, they have the curtains pull back and he's standing literally, I'm shaking the can or I'm sorry. He's standing literally right in front of you. As soon as I saw him, I totally froze. My hands were so sweaty, I could barely hold on to my cane. Um, it was like being 17 again and being at a Duran Duran concert. I have no idea. <laughs> I swear to gosh. Uh, it's horrible. So I walk in. And I'm like, everything went, I didn't introduce myself. I didn't say, hello, Papa, my name is Leslie. It's a pleasure to meet you. Did it, nothing. I just, I walked in, I said, hi, Papa. And then he's like, hi, how are you? And he's like, and I'm like, I'm okay. And he's like, are you okay? Because I guess he could see, because first off, I was so sweaty. And the pictures that we got, because we got pictures with him. Well, we got a picture with him. And I haven't even printed it because <laughs> like, I don't like it, but I like it because it, it's with him, but I, I needless to say don't like what I look like and everything else, but whatever. That's usually the case when it comes to me anyway, so I always hate my pictures. Um, so yeah, he then, I said, no, I'm, I'm okay. He's like, really, are you okay? Like he was concerned and I'm like, no, no. I said, no, I'm fine. I'm okay. And he's like, okay. And then he's, and when he stares, he, he, he's the type of person that I've heard is, he's a wonderful guy. He's very attentive. And when he looks at you, he is looking at you fully eye to eye to have a conversation. And I'm like, now you don't get much time, needless to say, because there's probably, I think there was like 87 people um, who did this meet and greet. And you don't go in until 7.15. So you're kind of missing the opening bands for the most part. But, you know, I mean, unless you're there to see the opening bands, but needless to say, we weren't. So we didn't really care. But, um, but yeah, I, I know I said to him, I was like, I said nothing for like a good fifth, 10 seconds. That was like the longest 10 seconds of my life. Um, and he's just sitting there. Well, not sitting there. He's standing there and he's like looking, I guess, waiting for me to say something. And I totally froze. I didn't know what to say. <laughs> It was horrible. It was horrible. And my husband, John, said the same thing. He froze. And, you know, so the first thing that I, I just said, whatever popped into my head, and the first thing I said to him was, so how do you like coming to New Jersey? <sighs> Why I said that, I have absolutely no idea. But anyway, he's like, oh, I love coming to New Jersey. New Jersey is like one of my favorite places to come or whatever, something similar to that. And, um, so I'm like, okay, now what am I going to say? I got this going through my head. And then I said, um, something to the extent of, uh, I said, I said to him, I have no idea how you fell under the radar. My husband, John and I, we didn't find out about you until March or something like that. I said, and he says, oh, that's okay. He says, I'm, I'm kind of new. He's, I'm kind of new to the band myself because the characters that he creates as, you know, the lead singer and stuff end up being killed off. So he is the fourth Papa in line. He was Cardinal Copia before then they, he ended up becoming elevated to not really a priest, but uh, the Papa. We'll just say Papa. So he's the fourth line of Papas. 
and when you go in to in the beginning you get to go see what he does is they have a they have all the wax they're literally wax dummies of the other papas and you go and get to see them in like their glass coffins and stuff like that when you do this meet and greet now from other people that i've heard from that were at this show and also from this reddit group that i follow they a lot of them said that you know in other shows it was a lot nicer meaning they had lighting and stuff like that when you went into the room and of course for new jersey it was dark it looked like they just threw those glass coffins into a room and that was it and you're paying all this money okay it's not like you're getting a lot yes you're getting to meet him but still you're not getting a whole lot you got you got a lanyard a, a vip lanyard they give you some kind of um what the heck was it i have this stuff over here too um like a a banner flag thing which we don't even really particularly care for to be quite honest with you um and you get the bag was nice you get like a um a fabric bag which thank god we had because when you go to the, the arena you're not allowed to bring a purse. You're not allowed to bring anything like that. So I'm like, great. I have a brand new purse that I had purchased for this show, which I wasn't able to use. I'm like, how am I supposed to carry anything? So I had to carry this one little um, money credit card holder thing. And then we get to the, the arena and I see these other people with like like fanny packs in the in thing. It tells you, you can't have fanny packs. So I'm like, really? <laughs> I'm like, I can't win. And I know when I had tried to call the arena, it would just ring and ring and ring and ring and I couldn't get anywhere and I just gave up. And um, so that was pretty much the extent, you know, and then we went, we took our picture. So literally, I mean, you were probably with him maybe two minutes if you were lucky so I, you know like john said too you you really feel like it was an opportunity wasted because he said the same thing he froze too he he had all these ideas of what he wanted to do he wanted to pose you know for the picture and and do this stuff and because of covid protocol and all that they really, they have a plexiglass piece that separates the two of you. But he comes out, of course, he doesn't stand behind it. You know, you're not talking to him through that. But still, you know, it's, it's just a matter of, uh, they end up editing out the, the plexiglass for your picture. So, the pictures look very, very, what's the word? Um, stiff. We'll just say stiff. You know, and some people were like, they, they did like this. And some people actually were smart enough. And I guess they weren't like petrified like like I was or whatever. The I mean, one thing I did do since I had the cane, I kind of put my cane out in front of me. And like held it like that so at least I had something like a prop I guess you could say but um but yeah John John didn't get to do what he wanted to do which I feel horrible but um I'm hoping that with whatever's going on with me I'm hoping that they'll be able to do with pain management and maybe give me whatever kind of shots I need so I can go and start looking for a job again so that I can be working for 2023 
because I can't keep doing this. We can't afford to live like this. And with the recession and things the way they are and in the way ex how expensive everything is, there's no way. You can't live. And now our lease is up. So, of course, you know, that's going up tremendously. So it's just one thing after another, but we had a really good time at the show. John took, I wasn't, unfortunately, I wasn't able to stand the whole entire time. My hands were sweating so badly. I was afraid I was going to drop my phone. And then sometimes I, when I did stand, I had to have my cane so I can't be holding on to my phone when I have the cane that I'm trying to hold on to. So I got a little bit of footage. Needless to say, that's what you'll see in the video, along with pictures that I have alter and all that stuff. So nothing of mine came out really good, to be quite honest. Um, but, you know, I was glad I, w I was able to go to a show because... His shows are phenomenal. He is a true showman. And he, John and I said, we will probably, if we, if we tend to do more concerts anywhere down the road, the only concerts I think we're going to do going forward now are just his. We won't pay the money to really go. Possibly Ramstein. We were supposed to go see Ramstein three days before Ghost. We couldn't go. Um, my back, I was in so much pain and it was raining. So it was a horrible day. And we had to go to the arena, or I should say the stadium, down at the Meadowlands. So I was like, and he, John actually really did not, for whatever reason, him too, he really didn't want to go. So we never ended up going to see that show. That was a show that we had bought tickets two years ago, just before the pandemic. So we were supposed to go during the pandemic, which needless to say, and there were a whole ton of people with Ramstein shirts on. So you could see all the people that had gone, that had went to see you know, ghosts and stuff like that. So it was a little, di <coughs> a little disheartening that, you know, we, we didn't end up going, but I should have known better. I had a feeling. I knew hell or high water I was going to see ghosts because there was no way we were not going to not go to that show because of all the money that we spent on it. There was just no way. I, I was like, nope, hell or high water, I am going. I don't care. We spent a lot of money on this show. We are not losing out on this. So, but like I said, we had a really good time with the actual show itself. And we will definitely go to a show again in the future. So. That was my experience with that. What else do we got? Um, to put you here. I'm trying to think if there's anything else going on. Um, it's really about it, I think. Except I still don't know what's going on with me. And I would like to give a shout out. I did not do a video um, Angela from to restore you she um, I met her through Dave's channel and let's put that there um, She's a wonderful person. She, I, she's so sweet. I had, she had sent me some stuff. And then I had asked her because I wanted, I, 
you know, when I when I deal with people, I I would rather give them the business than other people that I don't know. So if you have like an Etsy shop or something like that, and I, you know, talk to you through, I don't know, somebody else's channel or whatever, whatever the case may be, I would prefer to give you the business more so than somebody I don't know. So I had emailed her and, or, through, or not emailed, I had sent her a message through, I think it was through Etsy, and asked her, I said, hey, I'm doing a black and white journal. I said, by any chance, because I knew she she had a lot of um, wallpaper. She's very lucky when she, where she is, where she lives, she's able to get a lot of like these um, wallpaper books and stuff like that. So what she does is she'll, you know, put the stuff up for sale. So I saw that she didn't have black and white. And I, I said, well, let me ask her and see if she has any. If not, no big deal. Because I wanted them for the ephemera pieces for my uh, English black and white journal. So she had answered me back and she said, hey, yeah. She says, I, I know I definitely have some pieces. She said, because I told her, I said, you know, let me know and I will pay whatever it is that, you know, how much you would sell it for. So she's like, she answers me back. She's, no, 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 I don't expect you to pay for it. Nope, I'm just going to send out what I've got. She's like, I'm not sure how much I have, but I'll send you what I can. So then I was, I had gotten really sick. I was having massive pain and I had it for a good two weeks. Um... I don't know what it was. I went to my doctor. They had no clue. I was taking a leave. I had been taking dual action Advil. I was taking like six pills a day, which is the maximum amount of what you're supposed to take. And I'm like, and that was just to keep the pain away because I was getting these stabbing, I mean stabbing pains in my right right side yeah my right side it was debilitating i couldn't function it was so bad and to the point where i had it i literally anytime i had a move i had to use the rolling walker because if i got one of those stabbing pains i was afraid i was going to fall that's how bad it was. So I had gone to the doctor and she's like, well, I want to see about getting you in for a, a CAT scan, a CT scan and another MRI. So now supposedly they had said that they had to put the information through to my insurance company to see if they would pay for, you know, those two procedures. Now I had called them because I hadn't heard anything. It was like a week. And they said, well, no, it usually takes a little while. I'm sitting here going to myself, I could die from some kind of condition, whether it's gallbladder or whatever. I had my appendix out, so I knew it definitely was an appendix. But I also you know, had, had to worry because I had cancer that was found in my appendix when they took it out. Plus, when I was 30, they had found that I had um, cervical cancer, which was dealt with at the office. It was an easy procedure. They, it wasn't serious enough that it couldn't be dealt with very easily. But, you know, cancer is in my family. So when they <laughs> said about having to go see a hematologist, first thing I thought of, I'm like, oh my God, my, my grandmother died of bone cancer, a very horrible bone cancer. Um, you know, most of my father's family all died of cancer. His stepbrother, my, his other stepbrother died very young. He had um, kidney failure. Um, 
you know, so I was like, oh my God. <laughs> so you have all these things going through your mind. And my doctor said to me, don't panic. She said, because I highly doubt that what you're thinking is what it is. So don't panic. And it's easier said than done when, you know, you have these, <laughs> you have this stuff in your family. So it makes it even harder. But, um, but yeah, I never, they never called to say, hey, you know, we heard back from your insurance company, nothing. Now, this was well over two weeks ago. I want to say probably like maybe three weeks ago, possibly even a month now. And um, yeah, but needless to say, the pain stopped. I had called, finally, John kept saying to me, you really need to call, you really need to call because I'm horrible because then I don't call. And he's like, you need to call and see about getting to see somebody for pain management. So I'm like, all right, okay, I'll call. But I'm like, how am I gonna tell them what the problem is? I mean, I, I haven't even been diagnosed. The only thing I knew from the orthopedic guy was that he definitely said, he says, what you seem to have is a classic case of spinal stenosis. Now they had found when they did the first MRI, they found that I had deposits of fat located in my um, spinal canal, the lower part of my spine, in the in the in the spine yeah, in the spinal canal, which was probably causing the pain that I was having. But you know, it there's no guarantees on anything you know you don't specifically know well that's exactly what's called causing the issues you know so then they had me go and see a uh, spine surgeon or a neurosurgeon you know and then he tells tells me that no this can't be happening because of this and that you would have these types of symptoms you know and I don't want to be you know operating on you for no reason so we want you to do physical therapy that's all anybody ever throws at you is physical therapy physical therapy i'm sorry is fine if you know that you have a specific need like if you have a condition that it, you know it's going to help you like to help you walk again if you've had you know surgery for hips or whatever but when you don't know what you have and they're just constantly throwing, well, you need to have physical therapy. I'm sorry to spend $150 a week to go for physical therapy is a little out of range. I'm sorry. That's a little bit too much money for something that's most likely not going to work. So needless to say, I did not do ther physical therapy. But I have the, the pain management doctor's appointment next week. So I'm hoping at this point, maybe they can see if they can try and do something. I don't want to have a shot put in my back, but if it's going to make me be able to walk again without being in pain, then go for it. I'll deal with the pain. The temporary pain of having the shot in my back. Um, I don't know. But it does. It just gets very, very frustrating because you're very limited to what you can do. You know, things I used to love to be able to do. Even just to go to go shopping is is hard because you can't function because you're in pain. I'll put you, we'll put you here. No, can't put you there. You're too close to that. Eh, where are we going to put you? 
guess we'll put you here. So, yeah, that's been my medical issues. So, I didn't have, I did have to take an Aleve today because I've noticed that when it does rain, I hurt more. So, I am not sure if that has something to do with the arthritis. I don't know. That is one thing I don't know. Because, you know, I know I definitely have arthritis. on top of the spinal stenosis, but you know, and it, it, it's all because of my weight. You know, I had multiple people in my life, my mother, my father, John, you know, I've had all these people say, you really need to do it for your health. And I've, the lowest I've ever gotten, and I was I was able to do it many, many years ago, and it was in my 20s, I was able to lose like 80 some odd pounds, and I had gotten down to about 156 pounds. Um, that, was the, that was the skinniest I've ever been in my whole entire life. Let's just put it that way. Um, it lasted for maybe, a year and a half, give or take. I was literally wearing a size 12 junior top. Pants, that was a different story because I, I always had the hips and all that fun stuff, but um, I was still like a size 14 in, in pants. put you there we'll put you here but that was the skinniest I ever got and when you deal with weight issues you never see yourself as heavy as you are at least from speaking from my own self I can't speak for anybody else when I would look in the mirror I didn't see myself as heavy as I was and am. I see it more now as I'm older, now that I'm in my 50s. But when I was younger, I didn't I didn't see it. I truly did not see it. Put you this way. You see it when you have pictures taken of you, like when I had the picture taken with Papa, needless to say. But, the double chin and this and that, oh, please. <laughs> yeah. So anybody that deals with weight understands what I'm talking about. So I had made a promise to myself and to my husband. I said that as soon as I was able to hopefully get back to work or have whatever pain I can deal with where it's dealt with and I don't have the pain anymore and you know things are okay financially, whatever, because it's going to be another weekly expense. I'm gonna go back to seeing a psychologist about my food addiction. And I know they have all these different types of meetings and stuff like that that you can go to. And yeah, I, I had dealt with a doctor when we lived in Connecticut. I didn't really, unfortunately, get a whole lot out of the session because I had lost a little bit of weight and I still basically kept eating. So didn't really work for me, but I think it just could have been the person that I had been seeing. I don't know. 
or like anything, I just wasn't ready for it, which is usually the case. You have to be ready to take on that type of situation. You have to want it to do it, just like anything in life. And that's how I was able to do it when I was thinner or when I was younger. I wanted it. That was the difference. I really wanted to lose the weight, and I did. One little piece here. We'll just use this. My problem is I just like food. Not even that I eat a lot of food. It's what I eat. That's my problem. It's the sugar and the carbs because that's all I eat. And I can see it already because that's in fast food. Yesterday we had Burger King. Uh, no, day before we had Burger King. Yesterday we had Wendy's. So, yeah. Not good, I know. All right. So we have two done. So I think I'm going to let you go with those two. Basically, like I said, I'm not going to put like pieces and stuff down on it only because I'm not sure what I'm going to be. I Like I said, I think I want to use these as um, Halloween journal things. So maybe what I'll do is in my next video, I'll start putting the Halloween pieces on top of the two that I just did. Let me lift you up a little bit here. I'll throw this off to the side. And then what I'm gonna do is I'll cut around the sides, but it may, maybe in the next video what I'll do is I'll go and find my Halloween pieces and we'll put some pieces down and then we'll cut it up and we'll start to make some tags and pieces like that. So thank you all for listening to my banter today about my, my ghost show and my problems with my health and all that fun stuff. I truly appreciate all of you being here, watching my videos. And like I said, don't forget on Saturday, this Saturday, I am going to do a live video. Um, maybe we'll do for maybe about maybe an hour, hour and a half and that will be at three o'clock and then what i can do is we will put the journal maybe we'll put the journal together i i, I said i was going to um work on the 1500 subscriber journals which the halloween journal is going to be a part of because i'm going to have three journals that are going to be part of the giveaway along with I will be creating a specialty candle that the, the main winner will design themselves, meaning they will pick a name, the type of fragrance that they want in the candle. I will then design a label to put on the candle, and then I will create the candle for that person to enjoy in their home. So, um, but... I have three journals I want to make for that, and I also want to do that whole candle thing. So, so I have lots of stuff to be working on. <laughs> so hopefully in the next couple of days, every day I can do a couple of videos so that I can, you know, get some work done to make up for the time that I've lost with me not being able to do, really do anything and really feeling any, any good because of the pain. So... But thank you all again, and I will see you all in my next video, and I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your day, and take care. Again, thank you so very much.